let us recall what is a relation we saw that uh, given a set s with let's say six elements a relation can be defined the following way this is a set with six elements and the relation r is defined the following way as you can see i am trying to write all possible ways in which a divides p so here as you can see one divides one one divides two one div divides three and so on i write all possible two tuples where uh, a comma b where a divides p right all possible a comma b such that a divides b now look at this r is also a set isn't it so in the above example the number of elements in r is 14 as you can see correct right this this particular set has 14 elements so please note that s is a set r is also a set correct okay so next this is precisely what i did here this is a set notation of what happened here r is defined to be this either you can enumerate it like this or you can say it is defined like this we'll now look at the types of relations that are important for us there are basically four types of relations we'll go one by one the first type is called the reflexive relation so it just means for every element a in s a comma a should belong to r okay yeah the second type is called the symmetric relation where wherever a comma b belongs to s for any two elements basically any two elements a b belonging to s whenever a b belongs to r it should imply that b a belongs to r right so yeah that's with symmetric relation and next comes transitive relation which says for every element uh, a b c in s for any three elements whenever a b is in is in r and b c is in r it should imply that a c is in r even for once if this doesn't happen then it is not called transitive transitive means for every possible three elements whenever this happens this must happen so please note for any three elements this might happen and this may not happen if this happens and if this doesn't happen then this may not happen all right okay so the last one is called the anti symmetric relation where um as you can see for every element a b in s whenever a b belongs to r and b a also belongs to r please note in symmetric relation this happens whenever a b is in r b a also belongs to r if that be the case then a will be equal to b what do we mean by this we mean the, we mean we mean a, we, we mean just this we just mean that a comma b belonging to r implies b comma a doesn't belong to r that's precisely what we are saying here just in case both of them belong just in case it so happens that ab belongs to r and ba also belongs to r now this is impossible this can only happen when a is equal to b it's a twisted way of saying that only one of them can happen both this one as well as second one this one cannot happen simultaneously only one of them can happen only one of them can happen that is anti symmetric relations so let's look at a couple of examples now um uh, what, what you are seeing is let, let's let's see the first example um my s is set of all positive real numbers as you know it's an infinite set um we have been seeing so far finite sets but right now i'm going to consider this infinite set and r is defined as a comma b where b is sine of a you know that whenever a is positive number sine of a gives you a positive number b or even negative number b or even zero correct but you know very well this lies between um 1 to minus 1 correct it takes all possible values between 1 and minus 1 anyway that is not the um, um uh, uh point to observe here the point to observe is what kind of elements r has is r reflexive definitely not because 1 comma 1 doesn't belong to r while 1 is an element of s correct this is not reflexive is it symmetric definitely not right because let's say 
um, sin pi is zero, which means pi comma um, zero belongs to R, but zero comma pi doesn't belong to R. Correct? Let's look at the next example. So the first example we saw is neither uh, symmetric nor transitive. It is also not reflexive, obviously. Second example says um, S is a set of all positive natural num uh, integers, also called the natural numbers. We also denote it as n. And what I do is I consider all the elements of the form 2, 3, 7, 8, in general, n, n plus 1, and so on. All possible such numbers. It actually starts from 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and so on. You see, this is certainly not uh, reflexive, reflexive, no, symmetric, no, reflexive, no, transitive, certainly no. Correct? Why? Why is it a transitive? Because you see, 7, 8 belongs to R, 8, 9 belongs to R, but certainly 7, 9 doesn't belong to R. Right? Here are some non-trivial examples for you to observe. 